So what I've got here now is the baffles for my 4-inch uh, deflegmator and uh, a couple of uh, baffles for 2-inch uh, shotgun condensers. Uh, just cut them out, lay them out in draft site, cut them out, and now I'm just going to uh, stick them down to the copper sheet with um, just a water-based um, paper glue type stuff. All I want to do the, use these to do is get my centers lined up. Uh, I don't want the paper sticking to the copper or, or staying there for the whole process. So the water glaze gl uh, glue, just glue stick, just makes it easy to come off again. All I want to do is punch these centers and make sure I've got those as accurate as I possibly can. Then scribe the, if I need to scribe the outside of the uh, baffles for uh, cutting, I'll do that. Um, I'll be cutting these out with a Dremel with a sling di slitting disc or a um, angle grinder with a slitting disc. Uh, I don't want to use shears or anything, I'll just end up bending the, the copper and deforming it. And I've got quite a nice flat, lovely mint piece of copper, so I don't want to butcher that. So I'll just go ahead and uh, lay all these out and uh, then get into cutting them, centre punching and cutting them. I've laid them out because copper is quite expensive. Uh, I've laid them out so that I'm going to get the most, the mo best use of my my space. Nested them together, so uh, I've got as little little wastage as I possibly can. Now I just need to centre punch these guys and uh, make sure that I've, I've got my centres marked out. You can see we've got the uh, baffles all uh, centre punched now. Uh, what I didn't point out before was um, when I marked these out, laid them out, the idea is to get your water flow maximised through your, your your column here. All these little tubes will be coming up through the centre between the baffles. So the water will be coming in ideally through the side of the column there, between two of these, two of these tubes and that'll get the maximum water flow into, into this thing. Same with the little ones. I'll put the uh, inlets in between the two of the tubes so it'll inject the water into the centre of the column and, and give me the maximum amount of uh, free flow and, and cooling I can get out of that. Now all I need to do is mount this piece of copper to a board and then uh, drill out all my holes before I cut it up. That, w that way if it's all kept as one larger plate while I'm drilling, it just means I'm um, not going to deform this, this uh, sheet any more than I need to.
here I've finished uh, filing out the uh, holes to fit the in the baffles to fit the uh, tubes, cooling tubes. And what I've been going for is the fit uh, tolerance fit in there. The thing uh, with uh, either um, welding or especially soldering, silver soldering, is your uh, joint. You join your, your your solder or your your weld is is only as good as how close you can get your parts to meet. Uh, welding, you've got a bit more leeway for um, fudging it and uh, bogging in bogging in areas or filling gaps. Silver soldering, not so much. You uh, if you've got a massive great hole, the f uh, your your solder is just going to flow flow through it. So I've kept these nice and tight. So I've just cut my uh, cooling tubes. About a 500 mil long, and uh, I'm going to go and take them on, on into the uh, grinding area. So I've just square these guys off. You can see they're all nicely finished now. They do need deburring, but uh, and they're nicely sort of finished, ground polished. So now I've got the uh, ends of my pipes uh, squared off. Uh, I've given a, a burnish with some um, synthetic wool, steel wool. Um, and countersunk the in, in, inside of them just to de deburr the insides and uh, got them all aligned and press fit into the uh, baffles on the ends and all that remains is for me to uh, solder them in place now so I've just been putting plenty of liquid flux around the uh, around the baffle on the bottom here I've got my tubes all press fitted in and one of the advantages of, of doing it with the quite a fine tolerance is you press the stuff together and it will kind of mechanically hold together to an extent. Um, so I'm putting my flux around the bottom here, making sure that's, that metal's nice and clean, that's after I've already, already uh, buffed it with a synthetic steel wool. Oh. We want quite a quite a gentle heat for this. Maybe a little bit less than that. I'm just going to go around and, and gently heat these tubes and the baffle until my uh, until my flux will wet out onto the surface. Uh, soldering from the back so the front of it will look pretty by the time I've finished but being what it is the silver solder will flow through into the front just hopefully just form a ring around the uh, the pipe on the on the front face just start the lower out there now the thing I've got to be careful with here is because I can't see the inside there I've got to try and get heat penetration through into the core there and just make sure my my silver solder is uh, wet, wet out right around all of my pipes I'm using quite a lot of silver solder, more than I normally would and there we go um, it looks like it's gone around, right around the uh, tubes in the centre there once the heat radiator edited out through that baffle, that just, the solder just flowed around the tube. Oh, other thing that goes without saying is silver solder. Um, it's a no-brainer if you've done this stuff before, but just in case anyone has, hasn't, and uh, you want to look for lead-free silver solder, um, make sure it's lead-free. I watched a documentary on um, the... Um, police in the states busting um, illicit bootlegging operations and such and their catch cry is always poison we're doing the public good uh, because of the health the health for health risk i don't think they're actually looking at it in terms of the health risk for for say um, individuals that have got a propensity to um, drink alcoholics for instance uh, 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 they're banging on that drum, it's all about revenue, they're banging on that drum um, to justify their cause. 
it's shifted uh, a lot of the stuff during prohibition times it was all about the content of the actual alcohol in terms of oh there's methanol in there it's industrial it'll send you blind if you're making it properly and taking the four shots off it won't um, the latest one this documentary I was watching they were banging on about lead content uh, it was all about oh these guys are making dodgy stills and, and taking off dodgy product Again, they're trying to justify their means, justify their, their revenue collection and, and their, their operations. But um, lead-free silver solder. Here it is, uh, soldered up, and there's the, the rings that have just just come through. You saw the silver ring around the uh, edge of the pipe where it penetrates through the baffle, and it'll be same on the other end there, which is good. Means I've got a nice, nice solid joint there. This is the uh, four inch to two inch reducer I've just welded up. Um, I've got a four inch end plate and I've just uh, cut a hole and I've showed you in the previous shot. Uh, drilled it out, uh, reamed it out with a um, tungsten bit on an electric die grinder and I've just um, welded the, the stainless steel uh, ferrule, two inch ferrule, into the four inch plate. Hopefully I haven't got too much warping in there. Not too much. It's enough that a gasket can take that out of there. Um, and that'll take the weight of the column onto there. So I can run this off my um, existing uh, kettle with the 4 inch uh, ferrule at the top of it. I've just burnished it up and uh, ground that edge in there. Uh, make it smoother and, and Washed a bit with some steel wool. Ideally, I would have liked to have uh, pickled it. Um, it would have brought it up really bright. Uh, for anyone who's not done lots of sta uh, much stainless welding, um, pickle is uh, usually a, a hydrofluoric acid paste. It's not very nice stuff, but you paint it onto something you've just welded. You normally get tarnished areas and stuff from, from stainless welding, um, and it just brings it up uh, brand new, bright, bright stainless. Uh, shiny steel, so um, it gets into the little nooks and crannies and you just wash it off with water after it's done uh, and being very careful not to get it on your skin but uh, that'll do for the time being it's the end of the day now uh, and I've got everything I wanted to done uh, there's my adapter ring 4 inch down to 2 inch there's my uh, column Up to the def deflegmator I haven't got the um, Thermometer in here, um, hose barbs, and I'm off to, to hoses for cooling. Um, up to the top of the still head, this is the still head here. Uh, got the thermometer mounted in the uh, well there. Uh, well, actually, there's, there's, there's no actual thermal well in here, it's just a uh, fitting, and the, the sensor on the thermometer just pops straight through. You've got direct contact with the, the vapor path. I figure I'm going to get a, a more accurate and a more immediate result with that. 
given, especially given that um, in pot still configuration at least, you change the heat and this thing just drops almost straight away, you get an immediate result. Uh, what I've got with my still head here is a cap on the top here. Uh, if I want to ace the X, sorry, the uh, deflagmator, uh, and just run a, a coil straight down into the, the still head, uh, that's going to allow me to just pop something into there. Um, comes off here, I've got an adjustment uh, for the arm so that um, I can cant the condenser out away from the, the still kettle and the heat source. Uh, and then coming down here we've got the condenser with all the pipes running down inside it and then a reducer that comes down to the parrot and with the parrot this time I've just put a T, T joint in here and uh, that outlet there um, allows you to vent off any, any gas or, or surging that comes through here so there will be no bobbing alchemeters in here anymore I, with my own one that I've got, um, I've got an elbow in here. And I ended up boring a large hole on top of the elbow just to vent off any gas or pressure that, that gives you a bobbing um, alchemeter and uh, makes makes your readings uh, a little more difficult, which you don't want. So there, there's the whole thing. I can take that apart now, take it home this weekend, and the plan is to hook it up to my kettle um, and give it a blast with some uh, water and vinegar, clean the whole thing out. And then once I've done that, I'll come back here and um, finish cleaning up the outside copper nicely.